When you see the parental advisory logo on an album cover, you instantly know what it means. And the same holds true in terms of quality when you see this next logo. I hope your kung fu is good, because now we're taking a look at the Wu-Tang Clan. Alright, so get ready to pull out your dictionary here, because uh, when we talk about the Wu-Tang logo, this one does one thing that I don't think you're going to find in any other logo. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about. So the first thing is good design. Uh, as we've talked about in previous lessons, uh, we've got form following function, we've got the band name represented, we've got a good sense of form, it's independent of color. We're going to talk about the good design. Second, here, get ready, because here it comes. The psychology of multifunctional transcendence. All right. So <laughs> when I first looked at this, actually, when I first looked at this, I just did the public enemy logo and it said psychology of the logo. And I love the psychology behind the public enemy logo. But in this case, Wu-Tang Clan has done something that I don't think any other logo in the history of music has done. And that is their logo is so completely multifunctional that it has transcended what we typically talk about when we discuss multifunctionality, which is this. Sure, you can use it on shirts, you can use it on hats, everybody's gonna know what it is, you can get a tattoo. We still know that it's Wu-Tang Clan. Okay, I get it. However, what they've done with this, and let's just take a look, here's the Wu-Tang logo, if you guys aren't familiar with it, which I, I don't know how you can be not familiar with the Wu-Tang logo if you've been alive over the last 20 years. But here's what they've done with it. Not only is the Wu-Tang logo, not only does it appear in all of those places, but largely the plan that the band had initially, and I'm not sure who gets the credit for this, so for now, we're just going to say the whole band, this was the plan from the beginning. Once Wu-Tang was formed and they were shown to be a hit, if the individual band members signed with different record companies. This is unheard of. First of all, usually when a band will sign with a record company, and you guys, if you're signing with one, get to get familiar with this. The, the record company, especially now in the age of the internet where they're not making any money at all, they're going to try and sign as much of your life away to them as they possibly can. But Wu-Tang had it written in their contract that everybody could sign with whoever they wanted and do whatever they wanted. And as a result, you have several different band members signing with different companies, all of them producing their own material, and all of them still using the Wu-Tang logo in various ways. So after each one of these individual albums then became a bestseller, you have a logo that basically begins to stand for quality music. So it, it, at first it, it was, okay, we're Wu-Tang Clan, it's a, a big W, yeah, I get it. So you're Wu-Tang, big deal. But then after the band, they didn't split either. Here's the, here's the best part. It's not like, okay, your favorite band broke up, uh, the police broke up and Sting goes off on his own, uh, the Beatles broke up and, you know, John Lennon and, and Paul McCartney make their own albums. Uh, you know, they just simply made music separately. They still came back together to make more Wu-Tang music. So the logo in itself now stands for excellent music. And the logo perpetuated itself because now, even if you're not a fan of the original Wu-Tang Clan or you've never heard of them, but you're a fan of one of the individual members, you're still going to identify this member with the Wu-Tang logo. So it basically, this logo went viral because you have so much music coming out that people are loving, people are buying, and all of these bands, essentially, th this is, uh, I think it's five, six separate bands. <laughs> That's my favorite one right there. Uh, you have all these different bands all using the Wu-Tang logo. Everybody now knows the Wu-Tang logo and everybody loves the music that the various members of Wu-Tang are putting out on their own. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about the psychology of multifunctional transcendence. This logo has taken on a life of its own and as you can see here, it's even in the Afro Samurai soundtrack. Way at the bottom here, we have little inverted Wu-Tang logos. And in reality, sure, Riza did the Afro Samurai soundtrack, but, you know, Afro Samurai itself, it's not like he runs around and throws Wu-Tang Chinese stars. Anyway, I doubt you're going to be able to emulate the effects that this particular logo has had on the genre. However, it's important to keep in mind all of the elements that this logo has in order to allow it to transcend and mean something other than just the band itself. All the things we talked about, 
great design, independent from color, representative of the band. Anyway, like a lot of the other logos that we've talked about, I could literally talk about the Wu-Tang logo forever. That's all the time I'm going to take for now. But please remember to comment rate. Hey everyone, before you go, I want you to keep in mind that this video is part of a larger series. And if you click the link right below this screen, it'll take you to the full course outline where you can then select lesson by lesson which ones you want to watch. In addition to that, this particular video was a case study. If you have a band that has a logo that you'd like us to go over and explain the design of the logo and how it works, then just send your requests to requestsitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching. When you see a parental advisory on a logo, on a logo, it's probably the parental advisory logo you're looking at.